All right, welcome back. It's Back to the Basics. I'm Sean Barr, and today we are talking about Layer 3 at the Access Layer. Are you guys ready? Let's go! All right, we're back and we are talking layer three at the access layer. You may be asking yourself, what is that? Well, in other videos, we've talked a little bit about architecture, network architecture, and there being three layers, core, distribution, and access. And so starting from the access layer, access layer is where you plug in all your peripherals, the laptops, the APs, the printers, all the end user devices get connected at the access layer. At the distribution layer is typically where your access layer switches are connecting to your distribution layer switches. All of those get connected and aggregated at the distribution layer, and then those connect up to the core where traditionally a lot of the layer three routing decisions are made. So when we talk a little bit about routing at the access layer, it's really around getting some benefits of the uplinks. Now, Going back in time, traditionally, if you had uplinks going to a distribution layer or, or in, a, in this instance of a collapsed core where you have your distribution layer and your core combined, uh, those uplinks to side A and side B, let's say you had core, core one and core two, those two links would not be unified. So they came up with this idea called routing at the access layer where we enabled layer three on the access layer switches and then we leverage both uplinks to the core through routing protocols. So now with the age of multi-chassis ether channel, meaning we've got a core A and core B and they're connected together to appear as one chassis. And down at the access layer, we can do the same. And we can now have multi-chassis ether channel, which basically at layer two combines two uplinks and makes them look as one. We just said a lot of crazy technical jargon, but essentially the difference between layer three at the access layer and layer two at the access layer is essentially where is the routing decision made? Are we bridging up to the core and then making a layer three routing decision? Or are we making a layer three routing decision at the access layer? You get a lot of benefits from it because from layer layer three at the access because you don't have broadcasts spanning the network. It's really only IP to IP communication. The downside of it is that you can't span a layer two segment across IDFs or across switching environments if you wanted to, let's say, bridge wireless traffic. So you really have to make a decision. What are you gonna be doing in the network? Why would I want to do layer three at the access layer? Maybe I want that routing and resiliency and that control of my uplinks up to the core, or maybe I need the flexibility of moving layer two boundaries across IDFs. If I want that, then I've got to do layer two at the access. We're gonna do a whole tech talk on designing networks and going into all the details, but this gives you a little sense of what's the difference between layer two at the access, what is layer three at the access, and if you had any questions and something I said in this crazy technical blah, 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 leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next Back to the Basics. Thanks for watching.